Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Happy to welcome Liz Hand, who is a local financial planner with a very interesting specialty. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here with you. Liz, you specialize in women who find themselves suddenly single. Yes. So that's very interesting, and I want folks to know that before we really get going. But find out first about you. How did you become a financial planner in general? Well, uh, my dad is actually a financial planner as well, so it's all in the family. Um, and after school, I went to sc- actually, if I back up even more, mm-hmm. when I was in middle school, really, there was one summer where he just needed a little extra help around his office. And so I went in. It was basically shredding paper. Not that exciting. But I, you know, first introduction to office life. So I stepped on in and amidst all of the different normal things that he would have had me do as an eighth grader. Um, He let me sit in on one meeting. Wow. And so in that meeting, I got to see how it worked, how the conversation went. And at the end of that summer, my dad just stated, you know, I think this would be a really good industry for you to go into or a good Mm -hmm. job for you to pursue. Mm -hmm. And I kind of took it for a word, for verbatim, and started pursuing it and went to college for it, got a master's degree and started working for him. So take your daughter to work day really had its great benefit in this case. The life shaper, I would say. Without too much information, and it probably would be hard to even remember going back to eighth grade. But what was it about that meeting that just really got under your skin and thought, oh, this is what I want to do? I In in that time period, it was just how much about the family you got to know. Mm. Because the way I see it, uh, money functions like veins in the body you know, or blood moving through the body. It impacts all areas of our health. Um, And money does the same thing. It touches all areas of our life. It touches our family, our career path, um, the opportunities that we have, or um, the things that we have to pursue in a given time period. So... What an interesting uh, concept, because I know even biblically, you know, where your money is, your heart is, really does tell. What we spend our money on really does tell our priorities. Oh, yes. And if there's something we really, really want, somehow we find the money for it. How Mm -hmm. is that possible? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I always say our values drive our pocketbooks. Oh, my. So I always think it's quite fascinating. Um, You can really see the heart of a person by the way that they spend their money or use their money. Um, I've had conversations with families where the way that they have shaped the the inheritance for their kids Mm -hmm. can be because of a hurt in the family or because of um, an opportunity that they see for one kid to take over the family farm, that type of a thing. Um, Our values drive our pocketbooks. They shape what we believe shapes the way that we use our money. And And I find that fascinating. It is fascinating. And like the heart and like blood, it also affects our health, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Our emotional health, stress level. Mm -hmm. Um, You are really working in a very important area in people's lives. What does that responsibility, how does that make you feel? Uh, I don't take it lightly. Um, Mm -hmm. Money is something that somebody really has to trust you before they trust you with their money. Um, You can trust someone on a certain level and maybe have conversations with them. But really, since money presents or represents opportunity for the future or safety for the future, they have to trust you before they're willing to hand over their money. Um, And so yeah, the gravity of my role in somebody's life is weighty at mm-hmm. times. You know, if the mar- mm-hmm. if the stock market is up or down, like that can that can impact my sleep. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I also recognize I had a couple of different thoughts about what I could be when I grew up, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I felt like money was the most practical way to impact a person's life. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, before we go any further, I know folks in your field always need to give a little disclaimer. Oh, yes. Do you have that for us? I do. It's securities are offered through the Owen Equity Sales Company. um, And I'm also affiliated with Onimco and the Hummel Wealth Management Group. And those are not... Am I able to have this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me just read it. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to mark this right off of my securities offered through the Owen Equity Sales Company, member FINRA SIPSI. Investment advisory services provided through through ON Investment Management Company and Hummel Wealth Management. Hummel Wealth Management and the ON Investment Management Company are not affiliated. Okay, that's important to know. And these this conversation is a conversation, mm-hmm. so please don't run with anything you say and then come right. back and sue us. This is basically <laughs> exactly. is what these we need. These are broad to... strokes, <laughs> and uh, right. this is not personalized investment advice. <laughs> that being said, any good tips? <laughs> 
I should say that we are recording this on April 15th. Yes. The big, big day. Yes. Um, how can we keep most of our money and not have to give so much of it away to the government? Uncle Sam? Mm-hmm. Uncle Sam always comes knocking. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the best way to do that is really just to be forward thinking. Um, a lot of times people make rash decisions with money, which ends up triggering more taxes than they think. So, for example, let's say you your parent passed away and you inherited some money. And there's that IRA that you inherited. And your thought is, well, as soon as I can get my hands on the money, I can make decisions that my parents would have supported. But if you sit down with a financial planner or some other investment professional or attorney or CPA that knows their stuff about taxes, you would know that, well, hey, maybe we can put in some strategy to take that out as fast as possible to get you where you need to go, but just a little bit more thoughtfully spread it out over a couple of years. And, and to keep it a stretch IRA and perhaps even go uh, go generation <laughs> to get a generation. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot it. of things the hard way as well, Liz, i got to yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good learning, isn't yes. it? And then also make sure you're participating in your eligible 401k yes. or contributing to IRAs. To Always reduce. contribute. Mm-hmm. I know it's so much when you're young, you're not thinking about that. But that day will come mm-hmm. when you're very happy that you save for a rainy day. And again, that's so biblical. And there is something else I read that I didn't even know was there that it, keep your eyes. This is somewhere in Psalms or Proverbs. Keep your eyes on it, on your money or else it will sprout wings and fly away. Oh, Isn't interesting. that interesting? Yes. That if we're not just keeping an eye on it, mm-hmm. It's gone. Mm -hmm. How truthful is that? Yeah. And that can get people into the conversation about budgeting Mm -hmm. and making sure that they're minding their pennies really well. It's just good to be smart with it. Now, how do we keep that from going overboard and falling in love with money? How do we draw (laughs) that line? The the love of money is the root of all evil. That little line of distinction. Yes. Um, I always say it's to me, you have to hold your money in your hands lightly. Comes, it goes. Money is always in motion. That's something I tell myself regularly. Money is always in motion. Mm -hmm. Um, And so um, in this time that I have on earth, as much as I accumulate, as soon as I pass away, it doesn't matter. And so what am I doing with that money in the time frame that I have it? And just being a good steward with it in that Mm -hmm. way. And that's why it still goes back to those values that a person has. Yes. It really does tell where your heart is. It's very interesting. Um, That new pair of shoes can write when there's... A hungry child, mm-hmm. you know, there, there's just different priorities that yeah. we can put on it. And I think if you stop and think, this this has been something I've been um, just being mindful of, my own mind and how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into a habit. I'm a mom of two kids, and I've recognized that since I have had both of my kids, um, I buy coffee a lot more go through the Starbucks line or any place. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm in the car, I'm doing the mom thing, and then something kicks and I'm like, well, I can go get coffee. (laughs) There are are these little purchases that you make on a regular basis. You make those purchases not really with any intention. It just kind of happens. And if you can think those purchases through, why am I doing this? Is it because of some other reason that's kind of the underlying cause that's bothering you, Mm -hmm. but you're not really addressing, you're covering up with a purchase? Mm -hmm. And that's where that purchase of shoes that you just mentioned Mm -hmm. could, I mean, think about why do do I need to go and get that pair of shoes if shoes is your thing? Shoes are not my thing. Mm -hmm. Coffee is. (laughs) (laughs) Same thing then, that cup of coffee. But when you add those up every day, that Mm drive-through, wow, that can be substantial savings for something bigger at the end, my grandfather used to say, watch your pennies, and the dollars will always take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. I never understood that mm-hmm. until I got my shoulder and thought, well, look, if you're not frittering it away, you've got it for the big important things. Mm-hmm. Very Definitely. interesting. All righty. Well, we're speaking with Liz Hand, and where where are you from? Do you have a, a group that you call yourselves? Oh, just the, finan- the, she's a financial planner. I'm a financial planner with Pleasant Wealth is our company name. Pleasant Wealth. Mm-hmm. You somehow have gotten into a specialty of particularly, which I think is interesting, women who suddenly find themselves single for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes it just comes out of the blue. You get absolutely blindsided, either um, as a personal tragedy, well, Mm-hmm. Always it would be a personal tragedy mm-hmm. of whatever kind. Mm-hmm. How did you find yourself going that direction? Um, initially, it was just, uh, I mean, the history of me working. I started working for my dad, and then about mm-hmm. five years in, we purchased a practice. And it, within those 
I think it was the first year, there was a client of this advisor that I was helping retire whose husband passed away very suddenly. Mm -hmm. And I just witnessed a series of meetings and just how it warped her personality. Mm. And it wasn't like she just became so anxious. And so I was seeing that it was hard for her to keep track of details and conversations that we had. Our meetings had to be shorter because she just she would get to this point of just anxiousness where Mm. she started you physically shaking. So that would be kind of the the base of it. About two years ago or so, I just looked at my client base and I thought, who's which of these conversations am I really having the best conversations where I feel like I'm I'm the best for this person. And there's something about having to go through a really hard situation and just needing practical advice without uh, without disregarding the emotional side of it. Right. And I felt like I could bring that unique piece to the table as where, I mean, not every advisor, but most advisors are really uncomfortable with tears, are really uncomfortable with going into um, the history of you and your spouse. So I've heard stories of women who their spouse passes away and the spouse was working with the advisor. And all of a sudden, instead of referencing Jim by name, they are calling him your deceased spouse. And it's like, hey, you had this relationship with my husband and I want to remember him. I want his name to be brought up, but you keep referring to him as my deceased spouse. Those are places where I feel really comfortable Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And um, so I feel like I can just bring more value, a little more balance to the conversation. Mm -hmm. I have read that men and women view money differently anyway, Mm -hmm. that women tend to look at money as security. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because, you know, dad took care of them and now husband is is most likely the primary breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And as um, as men look at it as their their sense of achievement or perhaps some power there Mm -hmm. um, that men just look at money differently than women. They do. I think women have been, I mean, just with how society has formed over time, women are later to the game in earning their own money. Mm -hmm. Um, It's true. Or, you know, they've taken time out of the workforce to care for their kids. And in that same time period, their husband was having conversations about contributing to a 401k or their husband was had a buddy that he was meeting on the golf course that wanted to help him buy into a mutual fund. And mm-hmm. so these are just natural conversations he's had over his life. And a woman maybe not has maybe not had those same opportunities or casual conversations. So, yeah, I think women do view it quite differently. And they're used to being the um, the budget keepers of the home. So investments. that's right. So probably women have a better idea of actually where it's going than the men probably. do. Yeah. They just know where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. And the women know where it's going. So yes. we make a good team. Yes. Ordinarily, if, if, you know, all the Ordinarily. wheels are rolling in the same direction, it's yes. a good thing. We are speaking with Liz Hand. She's a financial planner. We're going to get into this a little bit deeper uh, as far as women who suddenly find themselves single and what they can do financially. Stay with us. You're listening to Our Community.